Hey Dave, thanks for coming over. We're just going to have a brief chat about this recent AMR anti-wet sumping modification that you did on your commando here. Thought maybe you could just give us an intro before sure. we cut straight to the video. Yeah. So this winter, I uh, I sent my timing cover off to AMR in Tucson um, to do a uh, anti-wet sumping modification to it. They actually do two modifications, and we'll talk about that more in the video. And I did this this winter and I waited until later now to really test it out and see how it does. Now this bike never was the worst wet sumper, but definitely after a few weeks it would be hard to kick over. And so now, after several months now, it never wet sumps. I can't oh. tell whatsoever. I kick it over cleanly no matter if it's been sitting for a day or three weeks. It's, uh, it's been great. So we'll talk about uh, what you have to do and kind of how it works. What is it that you actually send off to AMR then from your bike? So I actually you just take off your uh, timing cover and your oil pump. And so uh, those two pieces there, um, then they work their magic, send them back all nice and fresh with some fresh holes in them and some <laughs> fresh goodies on it, and you put it back together. So those are the two things you need to send off. And I noticed that there's, there's the pin, as I look through the video, there's this special pin. that It's like a hand grenade <laughs> clip, right? It, that's just to retain the ball bearing that's spring-loaded then, yes, is it? that's exactly right. And do not pull that off unless it's aimed in the proper direction because you'll lose it and start crying again. And this is probably a stupid question, but how do you know when you pull that pin that it, it, that it locates? Because it, there's nowhere else for it to go, right? There is nowhere else to go. So that okay. pin actually goes into this hole here. And so once the cover and oil pump and cover are installed, that pin's just sitting here and you just give it a yank and that just lets the ball fall right up against the oil pump. Uh, pretty comprehensive mods that they do then as well, especially as they take the oil pump apart and add those seals right yes just a little bit of machining on the uh, oil pump with the new seals and then the, uh, the little modification to the timing cover and then we also talk about the oil pressure relief valve modification that they also do so they add another uh, hole into the timing cover uh, lets the oil go back where it actually should be going and then a little a set pin that you just a little set screw that you uh, fit Okay, cool. And that set screw that you fitted, it was like a little worm set screw. Yeah. That screw thread mm -hmm. is already in the crankcase, is it then? It or is. Or did you have to... Didn't have to thread it. It's okay. already threaded on this bike. They say occasionally you will find that that hole isn't threaded, oh. um, but it seems like that might be a little on the rare side. So. Okay. Practically speaking then, this mod avoids the need to have this anti-wet sump valve here then of any sort absolutely at all. and you know just in your opinion Dave just I'm not particularly sure. keen on the anti-sump valves at all I right unless they've got a micro switch or something sure. like that even then I just I don't mind yeah. even dropping the oil out yeah. to be honest but this it's quite safe then right? it's extremely safe so the disadvantage of having a spring-loaded um, valve in line here it relies on the suction of the oil coming down into the oil pump to move that off of its seat provided you have enough suction where they put the valve here it's against the oil pump on the high pressure feed so it's the high pressure from the oil pump that's actually pushing the ball back yeah um, that's I think is a lot more safe um, and less likely to fail nothing really can happen because the ball will just move out of the way and the oil will still continue to flow there is no where for the ball actually to get stuck against it just sits up against the uh, face of the uh, oil pump uh, feed and against a uh, rubber o-ring there's just uh, not very many places where we can see a failure here Cool. Well, I uh, hope you'll enjoy the video, guys. Um, really interesting to follow it, Dave, as you share these terrific clips with me. And uh, please let us have your comments as well below. See what you think and uh, love to hear from you. That's such a great starting bike, Dave. <laughs> yeah.
Let's see if I understand this oil flow correctly. This is your feed line. I've currently got it clamped off coming from the oil tank. So this is your in, comes into this point here on the um, input, comes in and comes into your oil pump. So now it's gonna come through your oil pump under pressure to this. So your oil pump feed here. So this used to just be a seal and then there was nothing really stopping the oil from coming from the tank down into this port here and through your crankshaft and through the crankshaft and into the sump basically because it kind of feeds from the crankshaft through the bearings and just kind of leaked right into that into your sump so now with this check ball that we have here that should stop any oil coming down from the tank through the oil pump into here. Now in theory, you would think that the oil pump wouldn't pass a lot of oil, but it does too. So it's not a lot of oil at one time, but just over uh, weeks or months, it can just add up quite a bit. So the next part of the modification is to actually the oil pump. And I think even though this has been repinned, I am gonna take this apart just to show everybody. But what they do is they'll actually put seals next to the shafts here uh, of the oil pump. Um, so we'll look at that in a little while later. And so that's the timing cover, that spare piece. And then gaskets, I've got uh, the timing cover gasket the oil pump gasket, and then just ignore this, but this is the gearbox cover, which I was just gonna keep a spare around for that in case I need to pull the gearbox cover off later. And again, since we got the cover off and I don't know how old these seals are, they're not, shouldn't be terribly old, but I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them anyways. They aren't horribly expensive. Now you want to make sure that you do have the seals uh, in the right position going back in. These are the old seals. Uh, the crank seal was facing this direction with the big face out towards the engine, so up like that. And the points cover, the, the end of that camshaft, it's actually the opposite way. So that's how they will. the new ones will go back in. It's always a good idea if you forget, take pictures, or in this case, video. So we will make sure that that goes back in appropriately, like so. I'm gonna be ever so gentle. I think it's appropriate I'm using Whitworth sockets here. I have that seal back in in the right place. That's the first one. And now for the crankshaft one. We do have to drive this one all the way past where the sir clip goes. sure that that clip sits down in this groove like it's supposed to. It looks pretty good there. So that is getting the seals back in. Now normally when you would get a modified oil pump from AMR, the last thing you'd want to do is take it apart. Um, but I'm going to take it apart just so I can show you the seals inside. So you won't have to take it apart yourself. Now you can see here, this is the modified o-ring that they fit onto the feed. Uh, normally this is kind of a flatter type of uh, seal. But you can see it's definitely a big o-ring here. So let's get some screwdrivers and take this thing apart. All right, just four screws here on this side. They are pinned on the other side against into the plate so they shouldn't rotate out on you. I will need to re-pin them when I'm done putting it back together. Hopefully nothing comes flying out. It shouldn't. A lot of suction there. And so those are the gears. And we'll see if they come out easily. 
and we can see there should be seals on the other side of them. Now you can see the holes that the oil pump shaft has been machined out and now you can see an O-ring in there and there'll be one underneath this side too. And so that's an additional modification to prevent any oil from coming past that shaft and hopefully past the gears quite as much. I believe this gear has been uh, clearanced out a little bit on the inside to go right under that O-ring. So do make sure if you do take this apart, which again, you shouldn't, make sure the flat is on this side and the other side will fit into the O-ring. And we come over to here, same thing. That little bit of countersinking goes up against the inside, like so. Everything's back together here. Everything feels good. Here still turn. And then on this side, I'll give them a little bit of a punch. They won't take much. Uh, they're already pretty snug as it is. And that will be a little look at the oil pump. The other thing you want to watch out for when you're re if you do re take this pump apart is make sure that there's a lip right along here so that this doesn't hit the engine and cause leaks through the oil pump area. So there's a little bit this can shift slightly. Just make sure you push away from this face and then tighten. Part of this modification is we block off this drain, but normally this would be open. The reason for this to be open is that oil would flow through the oil pump into the oil pressure relief valve and dump back into the pump when you had excess oil pressure. So that's kind of like a relief valve, you just put it back into the pump area. What could happen is the oil could come down through from the tank back up through this uh, port, uh, through the oil pressure relief valve, and then back into the crank. Now what uh, this modification does is instead of having it drain back into the oil pump, we actually just pump it up out into the timing case. Now I believe this is done on the Atlas and some earlier, possibly early commandos, but definitely the Atlas. And I don't, I don't know why they changed that, um, but, but kind of instead of having that path available for that oil to come back into the crankshaft, if it does come down through it can't come now through this um, this port, this hole, uh, and wet sump anymore. It has to go through the pump, which should be blocked off by the ball check valve. That should help eliminate that path also. So now that we've relocated the oil pressure relief valve outlet to here at the top, this is the old hole, which means we now need to come in here and block off this hole Good bit of thread locker. It's actually kind of loose in here. So I've got this pasty thread locker, which I hope will work. So I'm just gonna run this set screw down in until it is below the surface. Now a couple of things before the cover goes back on. One is I made sure that my pump has a little bit of oil in it. I put oil in it before I uh, put it onto the bike, so it's not dry. You don't want a dry pump at this point. Obviously, this, this actually doesn't hold a whole bunch of oil, just a few, probably teaspoons, I'm thinking, uh, at any one point. So you don't need a lot in there. Just make sure it's not dry. And then making sure that you've got points wires through OK. And then you're going to be slipping that crankshaft, that seal, over this area here and you wanna make sure that goes on smoothly. I think I actually have a tool to do that, so we'll look at that. I believe the gasket material actually has a bit of a self-sealing property. I, I know it's the case for some of the uh, gaskets they use, and I wouldn't be surprised if this one does either. Um, so that helps too, uh, to keep that nice and dry. It, uh, there was no uh, sealing, uh, goop on the timing cover when I took it off and it, it wasn't leaking. So I think we're gonna be pretty good there. So this is the factory tool here to help that seal get up from that timing cover over the camshaft um, so that it goes on extremely smoothly and doesn't bind up that seal. Um, nice little piece, not horribly expensive um, and probably in everybody's toolbox if it's may even be sitting at the bottom. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and screw that into the end of the camshaft here. You can see it almost sits flush with the camshaft and it'll let that seal nicely fit over. So I will lube up the tool here and the end, the end of the camshaft here um, to help those seals go over it. And again, around the crankshaft too. Just put a little bit of oil where they need to go. Keep everything nice and ready. So again, if you recall, as we were looking at it, this piece of wire is holding that ball back. If that wire isn't there, that ball is gonna shoot right out of the cover. It'll be entertaining when I have to take this cover back off again. You gotta watch out for that ball and spring flying out. They actually put a little wire wrap here as a extra safety measure. I've gotta take that off now and don't lose the wire and we'll do that last. And now of course we can take this out. Of course it's slicker than snot because it's all lubed up. So there we go. Timing cover is back on. And we just need to put all of our screws back in. And then when we come around to um, plumbing up this again, I'll have my, I, I'm waiting for my uh, oil pressure switch to come in to the mail. Should be here pretty shortly. Uh, and then I can finish up this end and pull out that safety wire. That safety wire could actually technically come out now, but I'm gonna leave it in uh, until the last minute. And that is the fix for the wet sumping, we hope. <laughs>